let's go ahead and get started. First of all, you're going to need to load your development environment, which is the ISC Design Suite 12.1. That's a previous project of mine, don't worry about it. I've actually had to do this three times because the recording software that I create, I've been using, sucks. Alright, so I'm going to call this Demo 1. Do not put any spaces in your project name. If you can even manage it, it'll only cause headache. So select a location, and a name, and a top level source type. HDL and schematic are the two main top level source types. Schematic is where you have objects on a schematic that you connect pins between. Uh, that might be easier if you are used to something like a robotics studio. Uh, HDL though is code, which is what I'll be using, it's what I'm familiar with. Click next. I recommend use that as well if you're going to be following along. Alright, so product category, select all. Select your product family. Not everything is supported by ISC Webpack, but most Xilinx products that are modern are. I have a Spartan 3E. I have the 500 model. And my package, and this is the physical package type, is an FG320. This is important because it lets the program know what the physical layout of your I.O. pins is and that way you can actually connect to the outside world. Synthesis tool you don't really have a choice on so leave that as XST. If you have another simulator feel free to select it but I select iSim that's what I suggest since that's what comes with Webpack. Preferred language you have the choice between VHDL or Verilog. VHDL is more familiar to our audience outside of the United States. Verilog is pretty much the standard inside. I will be using Verilog. Nothing else will need to change, so go ahead and click Next, and then Finish. And you have a new empty project. The first thing you're going to have to do is right-click on your device and select New Source. Select Verilog Module and give it a name. This is going to be our top level file, so I am going to call it Core, since it will contain the core logic of this design. As far as inputs are concerned, you will always need a clock, or else you can't do anything. It is an input, it is not a bus, and MSB means most significant bit, LSB means least significant bit. When it comes to hardware description, you're almost always dealing with stuff from the most to the least significant bit. This is only relevant when you're dealing with a bus, which is kind of like an array of I.O. lines. If you have more than one together, it creates a bus. But clock is just one pin, so it's not a bus. Alright, so click next and then click finish. And you'll notice you have a new empty file, which doesn't particularly have anything entertaining or interesting in it. You don't have to do this, this is just how I like it to look. Alright, before you can do anything else, you need to right click on core and select new source. We are creating a second file of type implementation constraints file. I'm going to call it UC since user constraints is what this is typically called. What this file is going to do is define what physical I.O. locations are connected to what friendly programming names we give them. So in the case of clock which we have specified as an input right here. Right now this doesn't actually connect to anything. We have to define what that clock signal is, which is done if you have something like the board's user guide. This one happens to have the a sample user constraints file in it. This defines all of the possible inputs and outputs that this board offers. We are going to need two lines to define our clock signal. We need that one and this one. I'm going to rename these to just clock. These both have to have the same name. This one specifies the pin. This one is specifying an attribute about it. Since they share the same name, that's why it works. Um, as far as what this actually says, a net is an IO 
clock is the name that you're giving it. That's the friendly programming name, what we'll be referring to it as. C9 is the physical I.O. location on this package that we'll be connecting to for this friendly name. Now the I.O. standard you don't have to worry about, it just has to be what that is. Uh, this you don't have to worry about, it's just defining um, some characteristics so that the compiler knows what it is as far as its frequency and whatnot. Okay, so go back to core. Since this shares the same name and this is the top module, this will be connected to whatever is in the user constraints file under that name. Take note that anything that you put into this user constraints file should be connected to your top level module. Try not to have extra baggage. It, I can't remember if it even works, so just don't do it. All right, we're gonna create some more interesting things because as you can tell right now, this isn't going to do anything particularly interesting. Let's go ahead and add in some LEDs, which we'll use for signaling. And let's add some switches, which will serve as our input. These are the slide switches on the board. All right, as you may have guessed, the number in the brackets next to this name signifies that this is part of a bus. That is to say, all of these go together as one array, so to speak, uh, LED zero through seven and switch zero through three. So we have eight LEDs in one bus and four switches in another bus. Don't worry about what's to the right of these. That's just what the values need to be. It, well, it in a way defines how it's going to talk to these pins, but it's not something you have to worry about. You're provided the correct values in your sample user constraints.